My name is Shirley Tse, and I want to share with you the thinking process of incorporating 3D printing in my sculptural installation, Negotiate the Differences 2019 to 2020, a case study presented by M Plus Hong Kong for this conference. I will now um, share screen with you a PowerPoint. First of all, I want to take the opportunity to thank the organizer for including me, the artist's viewpoint in this discussion, and a big shout out to M Plus for embracing experimental and innovative approaches. When it comes to 3D printing, I will begin by saying my work is driven by concept rather than techniques. The use of 3D printing was motivated by the idea of bringing differences together, such as between the analog and the digital, between old technology and newer technology, between handmade and ready-made, between the unique and the reproducible. In a 2016 solo exhibition title, lift me up so I can see better. I was making a group of sculpture using as many different kinds of wire as possible. Physical wire, steel wire, copper wire, coated steel wire. And I thought, what's next? What other wire can I use? What about wire mesh object as in digital space? I was amused by the digital terminology, wire mesh object. How schoolmorphism is dependent on its analog counterpart. I began teaching myself how to 3D print from preparing a STL file to making G codes with various print setting to experimenting with a uh, different kind of filament. This one was printed in PLA and um, also experimented with um, printing wood and metal filament um, in this installation, Negotiated Differences. Negotiated Differences brought together old technology, which is wood turning, in the wood spindle part, and new technology, which is 3D printing, which is the connection part, and the functional and the non-functional, original and found object. Here's another view of the installation. In this detail, the wood spindle may look like a variety of different functional objects. They might look like ready-made, is as if I've been going around and collecting table legs and whatnot, but they're not. All the wood spindle you see here are actually hand carved from wood blanks into spindle um, using a lathe. And now they look functional, but they're not. For example, you see some bowling pins here. They were made according to the specification of real bowling pin. Um, they are in different scale, but the, the big ones are the actual bowling pin scale. Um, but um, because I need to connect all the spindles together in the installation, the logic of the piece is that I need to make extra um, wood at both end of the spindle for them to be connected. So you can imagine these bowling pin um, with the ends on the bottom, they would never be able to stand flat on the ground and function as bowling pins. And then now the um, connectors module, um, which you can see a number of them, they, these are metal and that's wood, this is wood and so forth. And this one is copper, it's metal. Um, metal. And um, they look like they were designed by me as an original design, but 
they're not. They are actually 3D printed from open source file available to everyone on the internet to download and customize and modify. Indeed, they come from this file um, by Captain Blind on uh, this site, uh, Thingiverse, which is one of the um, bigger 3D printing community online. And um, this file is under a creative, a kind of Creative Commons license that allow everyone to download for free and use them freely as long as you uh, attribute to the um, uh, the maker of the file. And in this community, I see a lot of uh, file available and um, for, uh, for everyone to download and use. And a lot of them are gadgets such as uh, hardware for a bookshelf or play structure, you know, the hardware for putting a play structure together. And now, and they are, you know, a lot of them are again under this, uh, you know, Creative Commons license that you are free to download and, and, and use it. And in my mind, these um, objects slash file existed in cyberspace. So they are, they're ready made. They are the, um, this cyber object is the 21st century ready-made. You know, these objects existed in cyberspace and all you need to do is to get a 3D printer and actualize them. To me, someone who were um, using a lot of uh, ready-made in, in my sculpture in the past, this is a very exciting concept to think about um, these uh, objects that existed in uh, cy cyberspace. And they are the 21st century ready-made to me. And um, now back to the bowling pin cluster, you can see that um, the connectors, I printed them in, you know, uh, with different uh, numbers of openings. So uh, there's a lot of possibility for the pieces to be connect. So they are functional. They function to connect the wooden spindle together. But on the other hand, they are um, also aesthetic because um, not all the opening are being utilized and that is totally on purpose that I want to have uh, a lot of opening that is un, uh, unattached to suggest an aesthetic of possibility. So now this is an installation shot of, uh, of the installation being installed in a different venue. Instead of Italy, this time is at the M plus pavilion in Hong Kong. And, um, and each time the piece is uh, installed in a different place, the configuration changes. And the way that it's put together is mostly by uh, improvisation. So there's not a, a fixed form to it. And by the same token, uh, this, that uh, this sort of changing um, and variation and flexibility also apply to the connecting module. Um, it's not important to get the same print every time from the same file. Indeed, differences and variation are the key idea. Even with the same file, I would adjust the uh, setting of filament in each print. So for example, in this detail, you can see that the bracket I use for, um, in order for the piece to engage with the architecture of the ceiling of the M plus pavilion, I use the same file uh, of the bracket, but in this case, this one is printed in PLA plastic. This one was printed in wood filament. This one's also printed in wood filament, but this time three different kinds of wood filament sort of uh, sandwiched together. So in a way you can say that um, each 3D print in this work is unique, but to me, the idea of a single file 
yielding, generating variation is more important. Now, the concept of public domain is another overarching notion for negotiated differences. While I was developing uh, the piece for the exhibition title, Stakeholder in Venice, as well as the um, Stakes and Holder, a slightly different title for the, for the exhibition at uh, Amplus Pavilion in Hong Kong. And as I mentioned, um, with the, the file I get from the internet that I was able to uh, download and freely use, um, uh, having the creative license, creative, creative commons license. And um, the creative commons really cultivated a community where people are sharing their creativity. And it challenges the idea of ownership and private property to which stakeholder theory is also calling attention to. And now this, uh, you know, this idea of using it freely um, it also being called copyleft. And I really like this logo for copyleft in the C instead of pointing to the right-hand side, it's pointing to the left-hand side. It's copy left. And now this is an image of a, of a uh, 3D printer connector that is so-called misprint. So instead of um, the print following the uh, specified coordinate, it's shifted at the middle of the print. It's shifted to the right, the bottom part. This is the top part and the bottom part kind of shifted. Oops, go back. The bottom part kind of shifted and, um, and I use it in the installation. I want to embrace interesting accident um, because that is part of the idea of having variation and differences and um, also the non predetermined. So in other words, it's not the unique object I like to see preserved, but rather the idea of a copy left digital ready-made that I like to see um, continuing in the future, despite the possible obsolescence of uh, earlier technology. I can uh, actually stop share now. So what I mean is that, so, uh, let's say in 10 years time, maybe even less, um, the 3D printer will be different. The kind of filament available will be different. And, uh, and by that time, if we need to have a um, connector replaced in the installation, I, I think it's really exciting to um, include that uh, using the, you know, the future technology. So I think it's really exciting to have um, uh, future generations of these um, copy left uh, digital ready-made to be part of the work. So now in uh, conclusion, um, in my view as an artist, I think the conservation, um, I see the conservation of contemporary art as concepts rather than object. So what is uh, what needs to be conserved is the concept rather than the object.